Alright, so completing the square. All right, x squared minus 6x plus 3 equals 0. Now, remember, always read the direction. The direction said to do what? Complete, Complete the square. square. It said you script out its formula, and this is not factorable anyway, so you could never have factored this. So, uh, make sure you use it completing the square and not the quadratic formula. All right, so, let's talk about the steps to completing the square. So remember, the whole purpose of completing the square is that at some point, you're going to use what property? Square root. The square root property. Very good. You're going to use the square root property at some point. So you got to get it to that point, though. So when completing the square in this quadratic equation, what's the first thing you're going to do? Move the constant. Move the constant to the other side. So I'm um, going to subtract 3 from both sides. And remember, we're going to leave some space. So I got x squared minus 6x, leaves some space, and that's going to equal what? Negative 3. Negative 3. Then the next step is to, well, first of all, you've got to make sure that x squared has what coefficient? 1. 1. Uh, so we're going to do one where it's not 1, but <clears throat> the one in your, your test will be 1. So I take the coefficient of x. What is the coefficient of x? X. Negative six. negative six. Not six. It's a negative six. So go off to the side and or in your mind. Doesn't matter. You have to write it down. <clears throat> but go off to the side and, and make sure you do this correctly. Negative six. What do I do to that negative six? Divide by two. I take half of it, which means the same thing as dividing by two. two. So I divide by two. And when I do that, I get negative three, right? Right. Now, what do I do to that negative 3, though? Square. I square it. Okay. And when I square it, what do I get? Nine. 9. It is that number that you do what? Add to both, add sides. To both sides. Okay. So you add to both sides. So plus 9, plus 9. If you're doing this correctly, if you do this correctly, the trinomial here should now be a perfect square trinomial, which means I can write as a binomial squared. And you can. X squared minus 6x plus 3 is, is what binomial times itself? X minus 3. X minus 3. Remember, we, we said this. Just make sure that when you get to this point right here, that whatever's in here, see, that number should match up. If you're doing this correct right here, that number right here should match up with this. So x minus 6, x squared minus 6x plus 9 is factored as x minus 3 times x minus 3. And on the right side, what do you get? 6. 6. All right, so I'm at that point. Now we go back and remind ourselves about a previous lesson where, where, we, had, where we had an expression squared equal a number. What property did I use when I had something look like this? Mm -hmm. Square root property. So remember though, when you do the square root, both sides you do plus or minus. So that's in this form. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over. So you take the square root, square root, and what do I put here? Plus or minus. So the square and square root undo each other. What's left? equals plus or minus square root of 6. Can I simplify the square root of 6? No. And notice, is, are, are my solutions rational or irrational? Irrational. Irrational. So since they're irrational, then just go ahead and bring the 3 over. There's your answer. So what's x? What do I get as the answer? 3 plus or minus square root of 6. There's your answer. Now, in my math lab, they're going to tell you to separate as two uh, separate solutions. So in my math lab, you have to use comma. So in my math lab, you're, you're going to have to say 3 plus the square root of 6, comma, and what's the other? 3 minus square root of 6. Okay? 
All right, let's look at number two. Number two. Suppose in number two I had 3x squared plus 12x uh, minus 3 equals 0. So 3x squared plus 12x minus 3 equals 0. Alright, what's the first thing we've got to do? Factor GCF. Okay, so you can factor the GCF, but what I would do is the coefficient of x squared not 1. So the coefficient of x squared not 1, I would just go ahead and divide. So that's an equation. Mm -hmm. I would just divide everything by, by 3, the coefficient of x squared, which means it looks like this. What I do to one side, I do to the other, right? I'm going to go ahead and write this over. Just like this. Divide the left side by 3. I divide the right side by 3. Now remember, you got to remember some things from previous courses. Mm -hmm. That, you see, how many terms are in that numerator? 3. Each of those has to be divided by what? 3. three. So if you need to, then do the next step. But many of you can go from here to just saying, when I divide each term by 3, that's going to be x squared plus what? 4x, four. Four pl and then what? Minus, Minus one. 1. But basically what's happening is you're saying 3x squared divided by 3 plus 12x divided by 3 minus 3 divided by 3, and what's 0 divided by 3? Zero. 0. So you get x squared plus 4x minus 1 equal 0. So you had to get x squared by itself. I'm sorry, the coefficient of x squared should be 1. So if it's not 1, you divide everything by that number. Now the rest is what you've been doing. What's the next step? No, not yet. Don't do that yet. What's, 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 just do it in steps. What's the next step? Add 1 to both sides. Add 1 to both sides. Need some space. Just like that. What's the next step? Four. Take the coefficient of x, which is four. four. Coefficient of x is four. Mm -hmm. I've got to do what to that? Divide, divide by two. two. What do we want to divide by two? Two. two. All right. Now, I'm going to take that two now. I'm going to put it in parentheses, and what do I do to that two? Right. Square it, and what do I get? Four. All right. That number is what you add to both sides. If you do this correctly, the left side should be a perfect square trinomial, which means I can factor it as a binomial times itself. So what's that binomial times itself? X plus, X plus two. X plus two. So this is X plus two squared equal five. Once you get to that point, what's the next thing I've got to do? Take the square root of both sides. Because remember, the whole, at the end of completing the square root, you, you're going to use the square root property. So you're going to go ahead and write this over. Square root, square root plus or minus. So I get x plus 2 equals plus or minus square root of 5. So do I end up with rational or irrational? You're right. Can okay, it simplify the square root of five? No. So go ahead. One more step, and you're done. What do I? What, what, what's the solution? X equals three. And that's a two. Negative two plus or minus square root of five. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so that's number two. So that was a quick review of of completing the square. So in your worksheet, I think there are how many problems are worked through? Oh, did I give it to you all yet? Okay. Right. I thought I thought y'all did. Yeah. Yeah. So.